guys, welcome to our chemical engineering tutorial brought to you by the Chem Eng student. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at something slightly different that has been requested uh, several times, which is just to give you guys an overview uh, as to my journey in chemical engineering. And thank you so much to everybody that submitted their questions. And based on your questions, um, I'm going to give you my experience and my journey thus far in chemical engineering. So the first question that I got asked was why did you choose chemical engineering? Well the truth be told I decided to study chemical engineering not really knowing or having a clue what chemical engineering actually was. All I knew was it had maths, it had chemistry and you could make a lot of money at the end which seemed like a pretty good deal but originally I wanted to be a surgeon however after I was advised to stay clear of medicine as if I wanted a life after university I basically had to avoid being a surgeon so the advice was to go for chemical engineering so I did and that is genuinely the reason why I decided to go for chemical engineering now the next question that I got asked was what degrees do you hold and what level are they? So all my degrees are within chemical engineering having completed my undergraduate honours degree uh, with a first class which in the UK is four years. I then decided to do a masters in chemical engineering which is just an additional year um, where I achieved a master's with distinction and I also won what my university offered was the court medal and the court medal was basically presented to the student with the highest overall grade for that particular year and then this led to the natural progression of going for a PhD in chemical engineering. Now my master's dissertation was based on the development of a hybrid heat waste recovery systems within a petroleum refinery whereas my PhD thesis is based on the extraction of lipids and high value biochemical compounds from microalgae using what's called a switchable solvent. Now again some of you have asked for you know more explanation on my PhD journey so if that's something that you're interested in let me know in the comment section below and we'll see if we can add that into the series. Now another thing that I often get asked is what is it that you actually do as a career? And this is a very very good question and I get this a lot from both my students online but as well from the students that I teach um, as well. So I am a full-time chemical engineering and project management lecturer here in the UK. I'm also a registered external examiner. So that's my day job. My profession is an entrepreneur. So I've worked in the private um, sector of education now for just under 10 years. I've taught maths and chemistry and now I'm basically combining the passion for business and chemical engineering um, into the, the last venture, my most recent, which is the Chemin Student. I'm also an investor in a wide range of different industries with uh, partners uh, with several different companies around the world as well. So a very varied um, career thus far. So it's it all stems from business and chemical engineering. Now another thing is did chemical engineering come natural to you? And I feel that this is an important point to make when we talk about chemical engineering because in general for me not particularly there was elements that resonated with me which made them easier to process however I did have to study a lot and especially in the later years of the degree. 
The trouble with chemical engineering is because it is so diverse in the number of subjects that you must know and the level of detail that is expected of you, this changing constantly throughout the years means that you really have to be on your game all the time. So unless you are significantly gifted, there is very few people out there that chemical engineering as a whole will come natural to you. So if you are you know, studying your degree or you're considering chemical engineering, know that it is hard and you are going to struggle with a lot of different aspects, but that is completely normal. It is a very difficult degree to achieve. Now, what part of my degree was the favourite part? What bit did I find the most enjoyable? If you can say that chemical engineering is enjoyable. And for me, this is quite hard to narrow down because there's simply such a vast array of things that you cover in chemical engineering that it's very difficult to pick one key thing. But for me, my favourite and has now become my specialism in chemical engineering is more centred towards reactor design, heat transfer operations and fluid dynamics. So they're the, the key things that I would say are my favourite uh, when it comes to chemical engineering. But I really just in general enjoyed the detail that we cover in chemical engineering. Because at school you're always told to accept certain principles, that just this is how it is. Whereas as you progress through chemical engineering, it allows you to peer behind the curtain to see why things actually work. And that for me in itself made the subject incredibly fascinating. So what is the hardest part of chemical engineering? Well, this is a really personal question and will vary depending on who you ask. But for me, where do you even begin to start? Because it will, as I say, is vary depending on the person and how their approach to chemical engineering actually was. For me, I found the most challenging part was actually in year one and year two where we covered extensive levels of physics. And the reason that I found it so difficult is because I never studied physics at high school. So this was a huge learning curve for me. Perhaps in the later years, I found some of the mathematical principles that were essential in order to solve some systems, I found them incredibly esoteric. So my advice would be, to make sure that you enjoy maths or at least have an appreciation for its importance within chemical engineering. You will find that the maths or what I found teaching chemical engineering is the mathematics is the thing that lets a lot of students down throughout all the years. So making sure that your maths is on point is probably the core element to success in studying chemical engineering. Now on the back of that, a really good question is, well, why should I study chemical engineering? And again, this is really down to personal preference. So from my pro point of view, so looking at the pros and the cons, I would say it's probably one of the most fulfilling degrees that you could possibly get. The knowledge that you possess, the skills that you develop and the respect that a chemical engineer can bring is incredible. You have the advantage above other dis engineering disciplines in that, and again this isn't something that I tend to do, but it's just a neat thing that was pointed out to me, 
is that we can do all the other engineering jobs, but none of them can do ours. So that in itself is a pretty cool thing um, to be able to have. And that's why chemical engineering has been voted year on year the second, sometimes the first, hardest degree to achieve in the world, purely because it encompasses so many different subjects, different principles that no other degree really covers. And then the more sensible reasons for studying chemical engineering is the, just the wide range of job opportunities that become available to you. The high earning potential is another you know, possible reason as to why you should be considering studying chemical engineering because your skills are highly sought after in a wide range of related and sometimes unrelated um, industries. So for example, there's a, there was a, a job that came up years ago that basically it was an accountancy company that didn't want an accountant. They wanted a chemical engineer. And for a very good reason is they wanted somebody that could cost chemical plants. So there's a completely unrelated industry that you wouldn't imagine a chemical engineer being hired in. So th the job opportunities um, is, is one of the best for chemical engineering. Do I have any study tips for chemical engineering? Well, I'm going to go on the approach of not being a lecturer. I'm going to take the approach of being a student. So like anything, the secret to studying is really dependent upon how you learn best. But for me, when I was in first and second year, my thinking and methodology was what is the minimum that I need in order to pass? So we, the way that the, the UK system works is we have coursework and we have exams and they're weighted slightly different. So we could actually work out the minimum amount we needed in order to pass. Now this isn't the attitude that sustains chemical engineering graduates or for those that wish to achieve high degree classifications. So in the later years, the methodology that I ended up adopting was basically identifying the finest of details that I didn't understand and making sure that everything was covered in the module I knew comprehensively. So therefore, I would accept nothing but perfection. And this is what has enabled me to achieve what I already have. And if I've worked with anybody here uh, that's watching these um, videos, any former uh, students, or anybody that's interested in my methodology, is I use the principles and the theory from Rolls-Royce um, as a baseline for high standards. And I hold myself to these high standards. And that's basically the, the best study tip for chemical engineering is you must have rigorous high standards of yourself in order to maintain and match the high standards of the degree itself. And I thought I would end on quite a nice abstract question. And the question was, are you proud to be a chemical engineer? Because sometimes people go through their degrees and they probably don't like it by the time they finish. Or some people just see it as, you know, a stepping stone and then they move on. But for me, I'm incredibly proud to be a chemical engineer. It's something, it's sometimes difficult to see the forest for the trees, in that when you are deep in studying, you don't fully appreciate just exactly what you have actually achieved. And it took me a long time to actually sit down and accept, after I'd graduated, 
that I am a chemical engineer. And as time passes and the more that I achieve, the more it makes me not only be proud to be a chemical engineer, but to be part of an elite group of individuals from around the world. Because there isn't a single thing in this world that hasn't passed through the hands, the mind, or even the book of a chemical engineer. Anything that requires a process, a chemical engineer has been involved at some point. So, on top of that as well, I've also had the pleasure of knowing some very incredible people as a result of being a chemical engineer, and it continues to keep me in very good stead. I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for chemical engineering, and regardless of what I do in the future, that is the one thing that will always remain the same. So if you're thinking about becoming a chemical engineer, or you're a recent graduate, or you're even a professional, then I hope something of what I've said has resonated with you slightly, or that you share my passion for the profession. But I'd finally like just to mention the institution to which I achieved my degree, and that is the University of the West of Scotland. And they've basically provided me with the platform and the solid foundation in which to learn and develop a world-class education system. The staff and the teaching facilities I cannot recommend enough. It was just an incredible five years studying as a top student. The support, the encouragement from this institution was integral to what I have achieved thus far. And for that, I would be forever in their debt. But that, in a nutshell, is my journey from the very beginning to the current place that I am now in chemical engineering. So I hope that this video has given you some inspiration, some ideas, and things that chemical engineering can do for you. Now this is one of a series of videos whereby we'll look at um, advice, we'll get some uh, guests to talk about chemical engineering and all that that will encompass as well. So if you have any ideas, anything that you would like to know, then please comment uh, below and we will look to create content surrounding that. But that is us for this video. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. It really helps us reach as many chemical engineering students as possible. Thank you for your time and hope to see you in another video.